Welcome back to the last game of Day 10, Week 5, Division 2, NLC. It is Lucent versus AAB Esports. My name is uh, Alexander Ashano Maya, and I'm with Solari today. Welcome to the NLC once again. Just to tell you, you're doing a good job, and let's see this game. Shall we look into the settings again, Solari? Yes, please, absolutely. I need to have a look at them. Oh my god, what do we have here? Tell me, tell me. What should okay. I look at? Now it's AAB last on the standings because Ooh. these are updated. The production is just Ooh. smirking right now, by the way. London <laughs> gaining the third victory for themselves, put themselves in eighth place alongside with Verdant. AAB Esports have a shot to take down Lucent. Now, if we look into Lucent, they're in seventh place and they only have four victories as well. If AAB take this one, they'll have three. Everybody will be tied up. Verdant, Luden, and AAB will have three victories in seven defeat, which makes everybody tied up for the eighth place. Lucent will be kind of stuck on that seventh place as well. But if Lucent wins this, they'll go to 5-5, five, five, which means oh. they will share a spot with Lightside, Raid Gaming, Domino Esports, and themselves. So four teams will be in fourth place. It's going it to be so crowded. Be but yeah. I think we started with four teams at the same spot, if my memory doesn't make jokes on me right now. And we might just end with the same position in the end of the day. That is rather interesting. But yeah, regardless of how this is going to look like, some spots are definitely going to be very crowded. But look at this. If Lucent wins today, and if mm -hmm. they win on Tuesday, they'll go from seventh spot, seventh spot, to third place. Oh, that's a massive jump. Can you jump. imagine that? Like, that is such a big jump. Like, obviously, Flung have to lose and yada yada, but it's it's a massive jump. Just as you're saying, yeah. it is clustered in the middle of the pack. Let's go into the champion select. Veigar finally getting banged. And I gotta say, we didn't see a Veigar today. I'm so oh. confused. It was neither picked or banned. I'm so confused. It's so good right yeah. now. Exactly, Vigor meet or Vigor bot lane even if you want to go completely bonkers. That could have been such a joy today, but no, not going to happen. Zeri is not going to happen either. Gwen, Camille, I'm expecting you ladies to be somewhere here as well. <laughs> but uh, the mid lane is going to be rather interesting because two interesting options are not available anywhere, but you still have some more standard picks that you just know work from over and over again. So. Uh, again, going to Victor, again, going to... Okay, I don't want to say Quark, I don't want to have, you know, the bad luck going upon us. But something like Syndra yet again, something like Orianna yet again, might just see them again, and I'm loving that ban of Rek'Sai. I definitely miss seeing more Rek'Sai on Summoner's Reef. I mean, in LC Division 1, we have Viking, he plays with Rek'Sai, and he's a ah. with the early jungle. This is why I think they took it away from Fantasy, he's also aggressive as well. She wasn't picked, and we got the cupcake. Exactly! Something we discussed today in the beginning, Caitlyn, still after some nerves that were introduced to her, she's still feeling very good on the bot lane. Might be joined by something like by, like Lux, for example. I was thinking about Kama when I saw her, but she was immediately taken away by AAP, exactly against that Caitlyn, because she feels so good with the AP support. She can go with something more tanky like Cleona, for example, as well, or Noctilus, but she just benefits so much if they have more Pogue on the lane available. Speaking about Pogue, that Ziggs also looks like a flex pick to me. Could still go for the bot lane for AAP. Ah, here she comes! Ah, I'm uh, loving it. It makes perfect sense. It's like the yeah. perfect duo, but I would pick Morgana because the duo really? Morgana Dark Binding with Caitlyn is deadly and you get the Black Shield, which is going to help you versus the Ziggs and Karma Poke. So I was thinking about that, like, oh, pick the Morgana. But no, I got you. I got you. It is a double jungle now with the Shin Zhao. Perfect pick as well. This is a perfect pick coming in from Lucent on the other side of AAB. Yeah, th that side. It is going to be the Volibear, and I've been told by Dan, JDXL's jungler, that Volibear at this point is just busted, is so good on the early game, get a single advantage for your team, and you run the mock, you don't care about tower dives, it is yeah. perfect. So, this is also a really good uh, composition, and just as you told me, that six is flexible, still really think he's going to go bot. 
Most probably, yes. We still have Kama, who's also a flex pick, because Ziggs feels very good with something like Leon on the bot lane. Something that can just protect him constantly, be at his side, and then this duo can be split pushing very much throughout all the stages of the game. So yeah, I would honestly love to see this happening, but then it leaves Kama on the mid lane, probably, as the second support. And this is something that could work, because you get Ziggs as the AP damage dealer for your team. So it kind of stacks together very nicely and not is something i wanted to see today just because how versatile he is but also at the same time you already have some interesting bands coming for the top lane from lucent esports so it makes a lot of sense yet again to pick him for ab esports looking at what is already not going to beat him on the top lane if you take set if you take Aatrox, you're mm -hmm. taking away champions that are capable of dealing with a juggernaut let's call him this way yeah beefy beefy champion so we're talking about Cyan, we're talking about Gragas, we're talking about people that just can tank 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 but Gnar is also another champion that is capable of dealing percentage damage but he's going to be first versus Urgot which is also a range champion and builds the Hullbreaker, builds the Titanic, he is really strong and I think this is the pair matchup Urgot as the lead versus Gnar. Yeah absolutely I mean He's going to be strong from the beginning, but then if you give him some time, he's going also to scale up into a very scary thing. And yet again, if you think about the potential of him for the whole team, catching out somebody singular from the enemy team and at the same time helping so much in the team fights generally is just so good. And yet another Silas we have for the mid lane. A lot for him to steal, honestly, from the enemy side and especially looking at Volibear, to be honest, and at Gnar, oh my god, Gnar ultimate on Silas mm -hmm. will be just so good. This is going to be a Tristana in the mid lane, I think. No, are they going no. to put Tristana on the bot? Okay, no. I got scared for a <laughs> second. It makes total sense to get the Ziggs on the bot side because why? Caitlyn is so good as an AD carry to push, 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 get those plates. And if Ziggs is a really good champion to counter push, so yeah. obviously it makes a lot of sense. If you put Tristana on the bot side, you're just committing Sepuko and Tristana wouldn't get anything. But now Blue Band with the Tristana is going to force Syntax to bring in the exhaust. So you either bring the flash teleport or you bring the flash with the exhaust to survive the lane. It's going to be a sneaky choice. I don't know. Yeah, honestly. Because Caitlyn Lux is a duo that is pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, they're pretty vulnerable to ganks and just to you jumping in and trying to form something with just a lot of gap closures and movement speed. Especially with the Lux who doesn't have any escape on her hands. But at the same time, if they manage to get on, on hold with the bot lane without the jungle visiting them pretty often, then they just poke you like crazy and then can bull you pretty much all the way to your turret, forcing you to stay there without any possibility to get out. Again, pretty risky to play here, very vulnerable, but it just pays off so nicely because it completely shut down the bot lane from the enemy. But here, we have Kama, who is going, again, to poke like crazy, and she's going to give Ziggs sustain that he will desperately need against this Caitlyn and the range. And as you said, they're just going to survive and to just counter whatever Caitlyn is going to bring on the bot lane. And this time I'm going to say it. welcome to Summoner's Rift. <laughs> for the last time for today, but oh, that is such a pleasure to say these words. <sighs> love it, love it. It is the Conqueror with the Silas, no exhaust. So there's a window, Blue Band can go all in, Ignite, Hail of Blades, level two, just demolishing the enemy. He can Ooh. actually go level one and try to do something and mm -hmm. bully, him, uh, bully him out of the lane. Top side though, this is the lane that I would like to focus before we move on. Urgot has such a massive lane. Nar is capable of poking away and slowing down. But if the hop is ever used in a bad way, Nar is just going to be melted away. Yeah, and for Gna, a lot will depend on the Mega Gna form her, for him and how he positions himself around the minion wave because with such laning and Xin Zhao as the jungler of the enemy team, you really need to always think about how you're going to escape. And as long as you have some minions between you and the turret, you are going to have this sage route for yourself to get the double jump and to escape pretty safely. So it is a lot about positioning and a lot about playing around how when you're going to transform and a lot about LCT trying to get into the enemy jungle, but just looking very respectfully at the blue buff and getting back to the lane for some early minions. 
that God gives the leash on the other side and moves on to the top side. I don't know, I don't know if Nar is looking to push in and get the third wave collapsing into the enemy turret. Because as a Nurgot, you have some sort of issues with the farm if you pushed against the turret because of your knee, your mm -hmm. shotgun knee. I, I love the idea of having shotguns on the knees. But yeah, <laughs> if you miss time it, you may lose an entire range, uh, wave of range minions. So Nar can probably try and push in for level 3. And I think Kastrulan is going to try and outpoke him and out push him. So it's going to be a fight of the ages on the top side in the first three waves. No, it could also be a good idea for Fantasy to try to be around the top lane if uh, Gungus decides to go for this idea you were just talking about, about pushing forward as much as possible. Because again, if you manage to get to the top lane, especially from the tribush, and cut away the way for Gna to get back to the safety of the turret, you pretty much get a free kill for yourself or for a top laner. There we go, he's trying to push in and instantly goes into the bushes. Puts up a war because he knows that Bobas can go into the top side and try to punish him. Even though Khan is made and built to stop this heavy push, it is a Lux, it is a Caitlyn, it's hard to deal with it. He's doing a good job nonetheless, but still going to get collapsed versus the turret. So everybody's trying to collapse those waves in the beginning. Now it's Syntax trying to do the same. Blue Ben just putting in the explosive charge on the top of his head and not allowing him to go any further. Now is the time at level 3 that Nar is going to transform himself into the Mega Nar. And now is going to be the gang versus Syntax. Syntax doesn't have the exhaust, so they force away the flash. And is now flashless in the mid line. Bobas can just revisit the line eventually and force something out after the scuttle. He doesn't even need to revisit the lane that much because Blue Ben, he doesn't have the health now, but he's still pretty capable of jumping onto his... Oh my god, forget oh. whatever I just said! Oh my god. Goodness, two kills on the mid lane already, but what a first blood it was. It was scary for Blue Ben to stay there because he had already, I think, half an HP left mm -hmm. by the time that fight started. But he wanted to risk it to get more minions and he paid for it quite dearly. Still, they're getting kill for himself too, so it's not absolutely desperate. Look at this macro though. Fantasy doing the most powerful thing he could do as a jungler. So. Syntax has a flash. Mm -hmm. And as you saw, the production was like, okay, are you going to teleport into the mid lane? No, he's not teleporting. So instantly, Syntax had to go into the mid lane, push the wave, or else the wave is, was going to be frozen right over there. Even though he's a Tristana, he would be able to at least freeze the wave for two waves, allowing Syntax to just lose a lot of farm. So this is a really good push. Now the wave is resetted, and the teleport is still available if he wants to assist any other lane. This was really, really well done by Fantasy. Exactly, it is immediately pushing a lot of pressure on the side lanes, not just the mid lane, but the side lanes, because whenever anybody decides to start any skirmish at any of the lanes, they know immediately that the mid lane can jump in at any moment and immediately bring the advantage of the numbers. So you want to be more cautious about how you approach the enemy. Oh, Kastrulan getting feared by the Nar. Nar taking the lead so far. None of them went back now. To, to buy anything because with the level 5 still a little bit shy from the level 6 so he's not capable of using that ultimate just because and if you see Nar using the ultimate on waves and all that don't fear Nar has the, one of the lowest cooldowns in terms of ultimate mm -hmm. we're talking about level, thir uh, level 16 30 seconds so you can Ooh. just spam it away so it's not even an ultimate it's like the W of Gwen I think it's almost the same cooldown <laughs> Yeah, something you do as a lag, just spamming the ultimate pretty pretty much all the time you see an opportunity because you know you're going to get it back very soon and use it again very nicely. But here actually, speaking about lags, I'm just realizing that the fights will have the major objectives are going to be rather interesting because there will be a lot of possibilities for AB to try to give away the initially the objective, let the opponents start them, and then jump in with whatever means they want and take the objectives away from them without dealing any damage for Sarah, but wait, because... It oh doesn't have goodness. flash. It's a dead bear. Nice yeah. rotation and vision. Yeah, poor dead Ponzebjorn, and now that's going to it's be some trade plates in the mid lane. What? It is, is a it dive on Blueben. Blueben yeah. doesn't have flash as well. Oh, explosive charges not enough. He only took like one shot. So, perfect knowledge of the map. Perfect macro coming in from Lucent. Nothing they could do. As soon as you see the volley bear getting ganked on the jungle, you go away. 
You, you jump away, away. Yes, you get to the top jungle and you run away because you know that they are coming for you. You're the next target. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw it. He tried. He tried to get another punch, but, uh, you know, when you try, when you go too hard, like, mm, I can do, I can get another punch. I can get another. No, no, yo. You stun, you get the, the Nar ultimate, and instantly you go for the Q after that. So the hop is still available. He's going to use mm. it on the minions. He gets away safely. Meanwhile, Bobas is at level 5, and that's a level 6 Xin Zhao. So you don't want to fight off a level 6 Xin Zhao alongside with a level 7 oh Ergot. Oh my god. No, definitely not. You need to get back and get yourself at least level 6 Bobas. That is not a good ground for you. You were just bullied in your own jungle. Get away. Grow up a little bit. You can do it, but next time. Zimba rotating, knowing that Ziggs won't be able to punish or put in sort of any jeopardy to you. So Caitlyn is fine on the bot side. We all see the Lux just rotating as much as he can. She got mm -hmm. the level 6. As soon as she gets the level 6, she will be fine rotating away. So Blue Band has to be careful about this. <laughs> He has to, but he manages to get away, not in a very careful way, using the ultimate to survive, but surviving in the end, nevertheless. But I think Silas managed to get the ultimate as well from Tristana, so next time he decides to go in, that is going to be a rather different fight for, for Bluebin. Because he, he decides to stay in the lane. Yeah, he decides to stay in the lane and wait for the minion wave to get to his turret, which is, again, a risky situation for him. It is, and... Lucent are aware that there's no Volibear in sight. They have a controlled vision near the river, as you can see. Volibear mm -hmm. is approaching it now as he's doing the scuttle. You have that little control vision at the top on those bushes near the wolves. Finally, he gets the vision. <gasps> okay, I, I thought he was going to be... Uh, a steal was about to happen on the live show. Syntax, though, wants to go in. But the shot oh. is available. One more touch is not enough. Fantasy has to flash. Fantasy oh. has to flash, but no one cares the about minions. the flash. The minions, the Winions! Yes! Gets the kill! Oh, somebody gets the Winions thing too. Thank you very much, I missed it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, as we talked a little bit earlier, that stolen ultimate from Tristana, next time there is a fight on the mid lane, it's going to go in a completely different direction, and that was a very bad call for Blue Band to answer it and not immediately try to run away from that Silas. Now he's running 3-1 already with a mythic item, already with a champion bounty on his head, looking rather desperate. One of the strengths of Tristana is being able to rocket jump in or rocket jump out. out. Exactly. Ever plus is like, no, no, you stay. Uh-huh, 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 uh -huh. you want to jump? No, sorry, it's not exactly going to happen. There are many other ways to pinpoint the Tristana, looking at Lux, for example, but this is just an additional thing that you want to bring in because you don't want any opportunity for Volibear, for Gnat, for Tristana, for 6-2, actually, to jump onto you. Going to be a really hard matchup on the mid line, even though Tristana is getting ahead in terms of minions, let's be honest, as soon as you see a Silas, with three kills, you know something's gonna happen. He's, he's not farming minions, he's farming champions at this point. <laughs> he's looking at 4,000 gold, and the lead keeps perpetuating itself. It's going to build up into a mountain, and if no one is gonna stop Syntax, he might be able to carry this game. It has to be Bobas to come in and save the Tristana, but what did we talk about? You don't gank losing lanes, so mm -hmm. if he puts himself on the mid lane instantly, it's going to be fantasy trying to get something else on the map. Uh, which is which looks like the possibility to happen right now, but Bobus decides to leave the mid lane. Apparently, reading your thoughts or listening to us casting right now, there is a dragon up the hex stick dragon, I think. Yes, it's not the soul hex stick. Yeah, thank oh. you. It is the hex stick dragon this time. Fine, I'll take it. I'll take it. But the teams <laughs> want to take it too. Look at that. That is a pretty powerful first dragon for you, especially thanks to the ability I used to get from it immediately. So. You might want to fight for it. You might want to try to secure the lanes to get the advantage on them and go for the Drake straight on. I like the idea that Fantasy is looking and fancying, like, can I put the adult in the mid lane, putting <laughs> some sort of pressure and instantly going for the dragon? And the team is like, no, 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 no. We got the lane. Every single lane is pushed. Kastrulan doesn't have to teleport, but so is Gankas on the same position. So we can get this free dragon. And now Fantasy, instead of putting the adult in the middle of the lane, just to push in to get the dra dragon advantage. He can use it to go back and probably go to the top side 
and use that at all to get some sort of advantage to Castrulan. Probably try to burn the flash away from the Nar. There's a lot of mm -hmm. ways to pinpoint this adult. So it's about AAB thinking, where is this adult going to be? And now Bobas has a mission. I need to find where fantasy is going to happen, appear, where is going to be the adult, and I need to stop him. So meanwhile, fantasy is just farming away, having the time of his life. And Bob is like, oh, I need to find him. I need to stop him. Yeah, but he's not in a very good position because Gunkus is pretty far away right now and won't be able to come in to help quickly. And if any skirmish happens in the jungle, Castrillon will be able to jump in immediately and square himself a kill, potentially. That's a deep ward from Gungus, and you, we're looking at it right now, actually. Beautiful ward. is pretty helpful, but uh, is it going to be a tower die from... Oh my god, is... Oh my god. The flash. Touch the flash. It's a victory on their book. Doesn't get any sort of planning. There we go. Ever Frost is going to be used. Blumen! Going to be used. The ultimate. So bust the shot by Blumen to push away Syntax. Getting himself some personal space right there. And uh, Syntax not losing any sort of HP. But this is going to be a dive on the bot lane. Ken now realizes. Oh no. The adult is on the bot side. Because the volume was on the top. Now we are in jeopardy. Wind becomes lightning. And the adult. Oh look at the top side. There's a, a kill as well. <gasps> Kastrulan oh was able to solo. Okay, we will need a replay from that, but before we go there, on the bot lane here, that was rather interesting action with Zeb, but actually, I think managing to catch Khan twice? Or turn twice, I would need to see it yet again, but yeah, managing to get the advantage here, quite a lot of turret blades funneled in the end, the turret will go down as well, apparently, I think, and that is going to be, yeah, the first turret of the game. With the plates on top of that dish, so you got the Sherry on top of that first uh, turret as well. Both top planners completing their uh, their hole breaker, but one has a kill, the other one has 30 minutes ahead. So <laughs> it's still advantage for Nar. But what happened on the top side? I think you try to dive the Urgot, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. Let's first see what happened in the bot lane because I need to see how many. Okay, yeah, that was turn being caught there once, but that was more than enough. Just a lot of gam damage coming from LCT and a very nice angle for the Herald to come in. And oh, here comes the top lane. Uh, wait, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not overstepping way too much onto that Orga, trying to secure that last damage to get the kill, but actually dying in the end himself. Okay, Q overcommitted way too much onto that kill and paid pretty dearly. The idea was good, yeah. but the execution of it was mm -hmm. kind of sloppy. Like, okay, let's dive him. And I dive him. Uh, no, but I'm not there yet. Oh, that happened. So timing <laughs> is perfect versus a nerd god because if you get fear beyond death, the ultimate, you get feared as well. And Volibear was not capable of following it up the, the dive because if he did, mm -hmm. it would die as well and that would be a double kill. It's all about timing, and Urgot is all about timing as well. Now yep. pushing the top side, Karma is trying to help. They're trying to remake that dive, but at the same time, it's going to be they're going to forfeit that turret. Nice clean by Can, not allowing them to take the first turret on the mid lane, the first mid lane turret. That's what I want to say. And mm -hmm. Gunkas will be able to take his own top lane turret. Yeah, trying to exchange turrets for turrets, but it looks like their opponents are just quicker oh. in doing exactly the same. There is a lot of pressure on the bot side currently. There is also one minute before the next Bergens, and at the same time already, look, yet again, speaking about the vision quite a lot, but it's just so important. Look at how much blue words there is on the map. Like, come on, listen, you're just warding everywhere where you need, especially around the dragon, because you know you need to go for the next dragons as well, and you n you're you prepared for it very nicely and much ahead of the time. This is a nice trap. Fantasy is going to face <gasps> check. Ooh. It's still a Shin Zhao, so sustainability is present. Syntax as the Mega Nar is going to push Karma versus the wall. Toon is going to get the fear beyond death, and Kastrulan gets yet another one. It's a second kill for the top planet of Lucent this time. And even though AAB were looking to get something on the top, the only thing they get is the teammate on the coffin. Mm -hmm. And now it's a good time for them to regroup and move towards the bot side of the map because the dragon is coming up in less than 10 seconds. It could be a good opportunity for them the moment they realize they're losing the fight and they're losing the herald to just regroup di immediately, go directly to the dragon and try to be at the pit first and try to stop Lucent from going onto it. But now it's not happening, unfortunately. Oh, 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 oh. Take well, it down. God. 
I'm sorry I was underneath my own turret. That's what Khan is saying as he gets sniped away from Yay. three miles away. Okay, this is the sniper bot lane. It's not the ZF Jin, it is the Gatlin Lux. We talked about synergy between those two. And there you go, this is the perfect example. Mm -hmm. Because there is the control the Caitlyn needs, the additional control on top of what she can put on the, on the table. And she can just jump on top of it so nicely. But Zimba actually oh, no. catching Khan over and over so nicely with a Comet running in with a final spark. Not finishing him, but Caitlyn's here and she's like, hey, I'm gonna do the job for you. Tristana was on the other side of the wall, yeah. not even jumping in like... I'm not gonna do that. It's like the minion that we saw that was running away <laughs> from the hook. Nah, I'm oh not gonna God. help. Thank you. Have a nice one. Mm -hmm. And at this time, well, they're getting some sort of a lead. 92. The gold is getting a little bit far uh, ahead in favor of Lucent. 4,000 gold and counting. Ooh. If you look into the top, they're pretty much matched up. It's only 800 uh, for Dinar because of the 40 minions, but outside of that, Oh, look at the jungle, so <gasps> Oh my goodness, it is just so dramatic in terms of CS and in terms of the cold. <sighs> yes, it is almost half of what Bully Beer has. No, no, how, how do you do the math? It's twice as much as he has. Oh my god, I'm having problems counting and <laughs> I swear it's so bad. Replay from the, the other ones, Buster Shot is going to be used and Blue Band is still at half HP, which means... Oh! oh! <gasps> Syntax You're is ready to go in and use the first shot. But on the other side, how is this happening? Everybody's getting caught out of position. Khan is just throwing bombs away, saying, no, please don't chase me. Bombas now will be forced to use his ultimate. Wind becomes lightning connected, but he's not going to do it. Syntax doesn't care. It's a mad lad. Oh, my God. Is he going to... No, he, he's going to live to see another day this time. Very dangerous for his eggs, though, to be here because everybody's getting caught oh my come on no no don't do it to me can everybody goes solo in the jungle and dies there one after another after another and that is the only thing that you absolutely must not do in this situation is go into the jungle even if it's your own jungle like, actually no jungle is yours anymore looking at the map you go there you have no vision you're alone you're extremely vulnerable the enemy team is fed they are very scary now and you're basically just granting them, so, them the free kill. So the only thing you shouldn't do, you do over and over uh -huh. and over again. It is disappointing. Gonkus is the saving grace for the team of AAV at this point, but I don't think that's going to happen. Blue Band is looking for the kill. Fencing oh. and flashes for Fuyu. Another rocket oh. jump up in the reset city. But now the revenge. Syntax is looking at him. Everfrost is going wild. And Blue Band actually lives to see another day this time. There's no objective in game so far, so they cannot capitalize on this kill. Aside just from getting a kill. Mm, already good enough for them considering the situation, but definitely they need to do more on the map. To step up in terms of how they move on the map, to step up in terms of the vision available on the map, because yet again, look at the amount of blue wards and look at the amount of red wards. It's just non comparable whatsoever. They're trying to take down the objectives, understandable because they have the objective bounties available, but Gunkus, you might just uh, escape here because you are a very weak nar. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, it was about to transform and Shinzawa was. I don't fancy maybe. that. I don't want to Yeah, go you in. can bully the smog now, but the moment he grows up, you're like, mm, maybe I should reconsider. Yeah, that's a lot of anger built up. I don't want to. Yeah. That. that is uh, that is my my job. And also, yeah. like two members went on the bot side. Can and Tune were really close to rotate if needed, but Syntax, look at him, the predator. <gasps> oh, Blueman realizes Blue though that something is up. Ah. That's the spider sense. Yes. He knows it. He's like, Mr. The... Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. <laughs> I don't want to get near the line. I don't want to get near that bush. <laughs> exactly. So, look at these gentlemen. They have a lot of pressure here. The Baron is up. So, you have a lot of advantage on top and on mid already. Might want to capitalize on top of it even more. Take down the inner turret on the top. And go for the beautiful Baron that is just waiting for you to go for it. And 
feel it. Okay, that's that sounds weird if I put it this way. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Baron is not the real Baron, so we got that. It's uh, okay. Oh, it's a volley bear being bitten, beaten up. So if you guys don't know, that Baron is not the real Baron. The real Baron, like the life, the the real life Baron, is the one that made the rivers when he crossed the Summoner's Rift. So you oh. see the width of the of the river. That is the real Baron. The one that we have on Summoner's Rift supposedly is like something that a League of Legends made just for the tournament. God damn, yeah. some lore here. I'm lore. loving it. Thank you. Now I feel bad. <laughs> oh my god. No, I don't feel so good. Or maybe Syntax is a real Baron. Oh, some conspiracy theories here. I'm loving <laughs> But no, thank you, because I was having problems with feeling sorry for the Baron being killed in some games in Ultra League, and now I feel better. Now you feel you. fine now. It, it, yes. It's, just, uh, it's a build-up. It's not even a real Baron. <laughs> oh, Ponsepion, don't go there. Syntax controlling the entire map with that Volley Bear. 4, 1, and 2. He has the Zonias now. He has the Everfrost. They are aware that the Baron is being done. But if the jungler goes low, it's going to be really hard to go in and try to steal it away. Syntax with the Meganar versus the Meganar. Gunkus should be the light at the end of the tunnel, but his fear beyond death in fantasy connects the wind, becomes lightning. He fences the volley bear. He goes in, gets the double kill in Okan. Toon, everybody's left to shambles as it's going to be loosened for another objective. The lead is humongous and he can do whatever they want on this summoner rift. Yeah, speaking about the ultimate oh, no! defense. Oh, I can't. You still live. You're so lucky today, but maybe not so much when you. Okay, no. You still live. Get out of there if you want to live for a little bit longer because you cannot do anything about the Baron. Your ultimate is not up and it's not going to be up on time. Just give the objective away. Nothing you can do here. Okay. <laughs> breathe. Breathe, Solari. <laughs> Thank it's you. I need game. to breathe in, breathe out. Oof. <laughs> 602 Fantasy picking the Shin Zhao and showing us why it's an S tier champion so far. No matter what happens in this game, it's still going to be really powerful. Guard Drinker, even with the tweaks, it's more than enough to shine mm -hmm. and rise. And look at that Death's Dance as well. Really, really good item nowadays, alongside with the Black Cleaver. So even though you have Brumble Vest for Gnar, Brumble Vest for Volley Bear, even Ooh. though you're trying to get that armor up, Black Cleaver will just delete that, allowing the rest of the team. To run the mock yeah exactly for every action from a b there is a reaction from lucent and in terms of itemization mm. you can see it pretty clearly like there is something a b trying to build up against but there is more stuff and you cannot build against everything especially considering that you are in a such a loss in terms of the gold just everything on the map but especially the gold and look at what is happening throughout the lanes right now that is a stomp from Lucent. They're going in on all three lanes simultaneously because, frankly, they can afford themselves to do it. They do not fear of being caught and dead on any of these three lanes and just they just want to go in to capitalize Wait. on the Baron buff that they have and no, he leaves. It's all good. Don't worry. That was that was close. That was really I know. close. I have PTSD versus Ergot, so yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> At this point, you were talking about the gold. It is 10,000 the difference between these teams at 25 minutes in. Way too high. How can you come back from this? I don't know if it's actually possible, but they're certainly going to try. They tried to save, well, to save Bobas, loses 50% of his HP, which means this is going to be an easy turret, even though Blue Ban is trying to fancy a back line dive. Ken is going to be demolished as well. They're taking everybody by surprise, even Gunkus. Where was Zix? Everybody's dying! And AAB is falling to the ground and it, I think Lucent are looking to take another victory. The first third goes down, the second goes down as well. Only the Nexus remains, but as that is nothing to the lead that Lucent was able to build, getting themselves the fifth victory of the split. And what a way to finish the last game of today, honestly. Actually, speaking about the 10,000 gold difference, I saw an Ultra League of Wands situation where the team managed to jump on top of it, but they were lucky because they managed to extend the game to a very late game. They took the Elder Soul for themselves, the Elder Drake, and then on top of that immediately won the team fight, obviously, and went straight forward to the enemy base and just crumbled into pieces. But 
Hey, they were not given any chance to go into this situation, this game whatsoever. They were not allowed from their base. Whatever, just not even a single step taken away from it. And in general, I would say it was a stomp from very early on, starting even maybe from the drafts. Because looking at the bot lane pick, looking at the mid lane, and especially how mid lane was executed against the Tristana, mm -hmm. there was just so much at Lucian's hands, and they used it so nicely. Because even though we saw Volley Bear going into the mid lane, burning mm -hmm. the flash away from Salas, you're thinking, okay, he burned away the flash. So this is a, an advantage point for Tristana. It yes. has to be. 15, 20 seconds later, bam, solo bolo. Salas getting the first blood. And what? So this is Lucent just shining versus AAB. So uh, at this point, they're isolated at the bottom of the standings for AAB. If they still want to have a shot at the playoffs, they cannot miss any more games. Although the standings are really, really close, it's starting to solidify itself on the top teams and the mid teams and then the bot teams as well. I don't know if we have the standings up, uh, updated as well at this point. It would be really good to see them at the end of the day or what happened. There oh. we go. It's Monster Gaming isolated at top with 9-1 after taking the victory versus Natives. We're sitting at second place, 7-3. Then you follow it up with Flong and uh, Light Side, Raid Gaming, Domino, Lucent, everybody sharing the fourth place. And at the bottom, it's Verdant and uh, London United and AAB a little bit alone at the bottom. Ah, yeah, it doesn't look it doesn't look very nice for them back there. While at the same time, it's so crowded at the fourth spot here at the ladder. But okay, we start with a very interesting standing. We expected to see a lot of them shaking, but we end the day with just some absolutely beautiful results of all these games. I had so much joy throughout all <laughs> five of them, honestly. It was just such enjoyable the eyes to see whatever the teams were able to put on the map right there. And especially in terms of how well some teams were executing the macro play throughout the whole games. And the vision game is something I personally just love to see a lot, but here it was just on some completely different level. Macro is really important, and today we got to see a lot of it on the second division. And this is why I keep saying second division can go into the first division with no problem whatsoever and shine on the NLC. I would like to see more of these teams, but I would like to see the schedule for the next week. Week 7, day 1, is going to be the 11th day of the NLC Division 2 to see what matches that we're going to get. Like, what are we cooking for the 11th day? Can we get a look? Oh, we don't look at it, but we'll show it on the social media. Don't worry about that. This is like my way of telling you to go onto Twitter and follow the NLC, either on Instagram as well. Follow us because we have all that information up there. See, I got it. I, uh, I, I, I smart, juke myself smart. Out of that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put yourself into this situation, but you managed to get out. out of it as well. <laughs> That's the top planner way. You make a mess, but you win at the end, even though oh, you yeah. got buried. So, Solari. <laughs> Any last words for the day? I have to say, I'm just so happy that I had this chance to join you here today because I had my expectations set very high, but oh my god, my wishes were fulfilled to the fullest. And also, thank you very much for your cast because it was such a pleasure to cast together with you. I hope I managed to keep up with your level as well, but I definitely had a lot of fun today. I think you did an awesome job. If I'm going to be honest, you did really, really well. It was a, a good uh, a good first day for you, and I cannot wait to have you back on the NLC Division 2. And who knows if even Division 1 is a good place for you. But I got to say, this was a really good day to, to be with you. And then, Cas with you, Solari, nice to meet you. And also to be with you guys back at home. I, I hope this was a, a good day for you guys to enjoy something fun. And uh, we'll wrap it up for the day, I guess. It was yep. a beautiful Division 2, Week 5, Day 10 as well. And I'll see you on Tuesday for Division 2, and I'll see you on Monday for Division 1. So have a good weekend.